Actually, at the Ontario Regional Museum. And uh, that actually brought up something that has really struck me. Um, you know, we, we travel to a lot of different museums, a lot of different events. They're all staffed with really wonderful, great people who care about the history of these vehicles and preserving the, the legacies. Your volunteer program is incredible. I don't think I've ever met a more passionate group of people who are excited to show up to do their volunteer work. Um, and I, th I suspect some of it has to do with the fact that so many of the vehicles run. Um, and so it's, you know, you get a, a, a free, I have a bird problem. Um, you have, you have so many of these vehicles that, that run and they get to get up close and get their hands dirty and work. You, you want to talk about the volunteer program at all? And, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Zach. Um, so, well, we differ from a lot of organizations in that, you know, we don't have a massive administrative paid structure. Um, up until two years ago, I was the only, uh, paid staff. Uh, at the museum. And before that, um, I was a volunteer here for a very long time uh, and had another career. So the core of our organization is the volunteers. And I can tell you that it's not just because the vehicles run. Um, because we started as a regimental museum and our regiment is a huge part of our community, uh, so many people uh, who either served in the regiment, are serving in the regiment, or are part of the regimental family, the cadet corps, uh, their parent, uh, their father or somebody was in the regiment. It was just always a community organization. And, and although uh, we've expanded beyond that, we sort of kept that, you know, esprit de corps and that, and that ethos of, of, of a unit. Um, so, like, you know, our, our volunteers are, are not just volunteers, they're members. Um, like as Nick knows, uh, you know, because he's is now been honored as a member, um, you know, so to become a volunteer here, you have to become a member, um, which means that you are part of the museum, uh, you're part of the museum family, uh, and it's not just like you sign up and here you go, you're a member, we have an extensive training program, uh, a minimum of 200 hours of volunteer service that are required uh, before you can even turn a wrench. Uh, you have to give 200 hours of service just to show that that you fit into that that core um, of, of dedication uh, to preserving our, our regimental and RCAC history. Um, and beyond that, uh, we have training courses. We actually run, uh, you know, very much. I, I've had I've had some people with with uh, extensive military trainings come to me and say, you know what, that was. That ground guiding course that you, I took today is twice as good as the one I took in the army. You know, so <laughs> like we, because safety is core, uh, because we're a museum using heavy equipment, um, we have extensive uh, from ground guiding to uh, comms and signals, radio operator, crew commanding, um, first and last parade uh, on the vehicles, um, and people, people. Uh, leave the institution, or uh, if they ever do leave the institution, they leave it with some knowledge because we're basically a institution. And I hope that answers your question. But I'm I'm very proud of our volunteers, and as you know, I'm very passionate about about my museum family. So. I, th I think it works both ways, though. Uh, it's not just a case of the volunteers being dedicated to you guys, but you your museum also provides a lot of support and trust. To the volunteers and i think it's a sort of a, a snowballing effect and part of the reason i think that the only re you are the only collection i can think of that could really do the convoy to remembrance is i can't imagine any other museum saying yeah you are not paid employees uh, <laughs> but we will you know insurance issues be down or whatever but we will let you guys operate the vehicles even though you're not official paid employees and you're going to drive them on the public highway and I, so many other museums around the world are going to go, ah, no, 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 don't do it. Yeah. Well, I think you have something unique and special there. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, they are, they are highly trained. They're highly skilled people. They're dedicated people. But it's not what you guys see here. It's not just what's happening in the museum. It's, it's the community. You know, uh, the, the units behind us, we have. We have a close relationship with the CAF and the RCAC and the and the Corps Association. Um, you know, the, the mayor of the city, the city council, the community um, is 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 largely behind this this organization. Uh, not only because of the tourist dollars and the pride of having this in your city, but just because the Ontario Regiment has always been such a large part of our community. So, um, 
That's what I can say. This is this is what I know, Nick. But yeah, like the, the we could have ran more vehicles, Nick. You know that. But it was just for lack of people, right? We only have so many people. So oh, you hear that? And Francis, I hope you do uh, go check out and volunteer for him. I think you'll have a great time. I did see Py Pyro Patsy said, uh, "I came for the tanks. I stayed for the people," which I think is a great a great sentiment. Um, and that was my feeling too upon leaving. Was I? Well, I'd sure like to spend more time here. 